Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Coffee Break Tuesday. Glad to see all your smiling faces out there. My name is Rob, and today we are going over three lessons that I believe are extremely important. And if you can wrap your head around these three things, I can almost assure you that life will be better off. Let's go ahead and roll into it. Lesson number one is to learn early on to mitigate regret. Nothing will eat you up more later in life than that nasty feeling of regret. Like a nasty lingering taste, it just never goes away. A simple rule I use to combat regret is this. When faced with an obstacle, task, or an opportunity, I ask myself, is there something good that can come from what I'm about to do? If the answer is yes, I move on to the next question. Will I be worse off if I tried something versus not trying at all? If I will not be any worse off for trying or asking or going, then I always choose to do. Well, not always, but I try to choose to do. If I ask for a raise, what is the worst that can happen? If I go years without asking, regret will indeed creep in. I rarely regret a morning run after I complete it, but I always regret when I skip it. I do not regret doing many things, but I do regret a lot of things that I had the opportunity to do, but allow laziness or fear to persuade me otherwise. And the deepest regrets are usually the ones that came with little risk because it's hard to justify why you feared it later in life. Quitting something you look back on and wish you would have completed, stuck with, or simply persevered against will haunt your dreams later in life. You can't go back and do it over, and now that eats at you. On the other side of the door of laziness and procrastination resides regret. And too many regrets in life will make it almost unbearable. Now, we all have and will continue to have regrets. It's not something that's going to go away. Find a method to help you at least reduce them. For me, it's usually choosing to try and do what I'm afraid of or what I am unsure about. The worst thing that can happen is you wake up the next morning in the same place you were the day before. Great. You get to try again. Step three, which I'll cover in a bit, will also help with this as well. Uh, do not regret missing opportunities out of laziness, fear, or what we will talk about next. So the second lesson I want to cover is battling the invisible enemy, procrastination. Procrastination is the first thing you wake up to every morning. As soon as the alarm clock goes off, hitting the snooze button slithers into your mind like the serpent from Paradise Lost, and you press the button of procrastination. This is procrastination slapping the ever-living shiitake out of you before you ever even open your eyes, and like a shadow, it will follow you throughout the entire day. A challenge we all face in life is regulating how much this shadow of procrastination is allowed to rule over us. If left to govern itself, you will fail to accomplish pretty much anything of substance. You will put off participating in life for so long that one day you will wake up and realize that the ever-flowing hourglass is down to the last few grains and procrastination does not stop until the last grain of sand makes its way through the throat of the glass. Like a shadow, procrastination never goes away, so we have to deal with it. Deal with it when you are young, if possible. The best way I have found to combat procrastination is to plan out your day in a pretty detailed way. You need to be up by this time because you have this much time to do X and then Y, and only then can you get to Z. Reason and purpose have to be scheduled into your day. The side effects of procrastination winning is depression and anxiety. And when I have procrastination in check personally, I'm usually cruising through the day. I'm feeling in control and confident, and I am mentally strong. Once I slack, I skip a run, I put off an assignment, I do not wake up early enough to go through my morning routine, it spirals my day and it puts me in this poopy pants mentality. Well, if I skip this, I might as well skip that. And if I didn't get this done, then whatever, I'll, I'll just start back tomorrow. We all face a different form of this demon procrastination. So you will need to do the research to find out how to best control it in your life. Do not let it control your life for too long. It's a cavern that can swallow you up if not mitigated early on in life. You choose when you procrastinate, and that is the third lesson. You control everything. It took me a while to come to terms with how much was actually in my control. Nobody forces you to think or act or be any way but that in which you choose. This is kind of a Epictetus stoic -y type stuff, so hear me out. I used to say things like, well, that made me upset. What that person said made me feel inadequate 
or angry. That girl saying I'm ugly, she hurt my confidence. It's not what someone else does that makes me feel a certain way. I choose what I get angry about. I choose what makes me feel jealous, incompetent, or sad. Once I realized I had the power to control every aspect of how I felt, it took the power away from everyone else. A bully can't make you feel weak if you do not allow him to. Jocko Willink's book, Extreme Ownership, which I'll link down in the description below if you want to check it out, plays into this as well. Once I realized I controlled how I felt, I also realized I control every situation I get myself into. I am sitting on a job because I chose to sit at this job. Whether I enjoy it or not is not someone else's fault. I chose to be here. I can stand up and walk out right now and accept the consequences, good or bad, that will come from it. I can choose to be comfortable and sit here and do what I have always done. None are wrong, but they are all my choice. I can choose to start a business. I can go pan for gold. There have been things in my life where I felt trapped, and I would use excuses like, well, everyone that grew up like me lives like this, so I have to as well. I didn't do good in school, so here I am in boot camp. I can't start my own business because I don't know how. No one taught me. No one has showed me how. No one will help me. The old pesky no one who never shows up because no one does not exist. And no one will ever show up. You choose to teach yourself. You choose to show yourself how to do it. You choose to help yourself. All the tools are out there. We just have to choose to use them. Discovering that this no one never shows up for anybody made me realize that I am in control. Now, granted, we do not choose everything. You can't choose your parents, uh, where you were born, or how you grew up. But everything you can control, you need to take note of. Because your situation is more because of you than anything else. And the choices I make determine the quality of my life 100%. It's crazy. It's mostly all up to me. Now, all three of these steps, for me at least, are still a work in progress. I do not want you thinking that I have mastered all three of these and like some wise sage, I figured it all out and I'm speaking from the top of a mountain. I know if I could ever master these three lessons completely, that my life would indeed improve tenfold. So I would challenge you to look at these three lessons and see where you can improve in your life. So I hope you've gotten something from this coffee break. My coffee is always linked in the description below. If you want to support the channel and what I am doing on here, that is the best way to do so. Uh, I will be adding mugs and bookmarks and other things in the future. With that being said, sip some amazing coffee, flip through the pages of some old books, and I will chat with you very, very soon. As always, stay blessed. Love y'all.